Now, let's welcome Charmaine Paula Oliver Magbuhos, a postgraduate in global business journalism at Tsinghua University, to give her speech. Yeah. Hello, um, Vice President Liu Yihong, Chairman Lambino, Executive Chief Director Shi Ting, General Manager Xiong Ying, and everyone watching today. Good afternoon and xiao hao. My name is Charmaine Paula Oliver Magbuhos, or Char for short. Um, a Filipino influencer and that has been in China for six years now. And I will share my insights today regarding the developments and changes in China and in the Philippines. So Hongbao, Niangao, um, Chinese lion dance, Binondo, wearing red during birthdays and special occasions and getting different jade jewelries every year to boost my luck and get rid of bad karma. I associate these whenever I thought of China or Chinese people because I grew up around Binondo, the Chinatown in Manila, and was only exposed to this culture. So imagine my reaction when I first arrived in Beijing, China, and I didn't see the lanterns or the red papers on walls. When I had my first Chinese New Year and no one was wearing red or eating nian gao and no Chinese lion dancers were coming to my door to bring my home luck and to scare the ghost or the bad omen away. I have been in China for six years now and since 2017, the year I arrived China, there have been a lot of changes both in China and in the Philippines. So in the Philippines, I remember when Shopee, an online buying and selling platform like Taobao, first started. People were saying that online shopping would never stick and that Shopee was just a fad since Filipinos love to go to malls and hang out. When Gcash, an e-wallet app, wasn't even a thing and people were still using cash and credit cards. Though carrying cash and using them to pay is still common, I am confident that it will change soon, seeing that Gcash users are increasing year by year. B-World Online reports that there are now 60 million Filipinos that are registered in the e-wallet platform, and that the daily logins and transactions in 2022 alone are up to 29 million daily, uh, for daily logins and 19 million for transactions. Um, how our internet before was slower than well, I could say a turtle unwilling to walk. It is still slow, but at least now that our turtle is walking and soon it will start running. A report by uh, speedtest.net shows that in 2022, the average download speed for fixed broadband in the Philippines is 102.93 Mbps, putting the Philippines in 46th place out of 182 countries. Um, you know the saying about like when you want to learn how to run, you need to walk before you run. I am confident that we will get our turtle-like internet running very soon. Um, when I first visited China in early 2017 as a tourist, China was already pretty advanced in technology and economy. But that also meant that competition in China was really tough. Kindergartners were expected to learn things second year primary students should and would learn. Professionals in the workforce were working nonstop 24 seven and were expected to learn new skills and improve themselves in their free time, if they had any. Now I see the Chinese government is putting more importance on giving children the hope of our future, a real childhood, implementing a, a law on family education that stipulates that parents and guardians should carefully allot time for minors to study, rest, play, and engage in physical exercise. More and more companies are adopting a flexible work schedule and giving their employees their personal life back. In 2021, at least four Chinese that a tax giant announced plans to cancel mandatory overtime. Some changes are company-wide and others are specific to business units. ByteDance, Kwai Shou, Mei Tuan, 
um, announced the end of a policy called Big Week, Small Week, where a more moderate schedule follows a six-day work week. In June of 2021, a game studio owned by Tencent rolled out a policy that mandated employees to punch out at 6 p.m. every Wednesday and take their weekends off. These are just some of examples, but believe me, the achievements and developments of both countries are too long lists that keep going. As an international student in China, I feel excited to see and be part of the changes that will unfold right before my eyes, emphasizing on being a part of these changes. The China I know now, skyscrapers, amazing architecture, wide and busy roads, a food menu that is beyond sweet and sour pork, beef, broccoli, shomai and shoubao, and advanced technology. A whole other culture that is unknown to the Filipino people. So I asked myself, why were we not made, or why were we not made aware of the China I know now? Why were we not told that the Chinese architecture and infrastructure were more advanced than we thought? Or maybe why I didn't realize that China is 30 times bigger than the Philippines meaning that we would need around 32 Philippines in order to make up a country as big as China. Maybe I should have failed my geography class back in high school. Even so, I made it a mission. It, I made it my personal mission to bridge this gap. I created Shar in China, my own personal brand, where my mission is to not gather likes or followers, but to share a Filipino perspective of what China is like and to show China the Filipino culture. I am currently taking my master's degree um, in global business journalism at Tsinghua University, not because I want to be a journalist, but to better my communication skills so that I can get my message across. And that is, China is my second home. I want to share my second home with the Filipino people. Though my country, the Philippines, might be small, and the Filipino people ha still have so much to offer, and our culture is worth getting to know. Whenever I upload a video created um, for Nihao Manila, a project of the Chinese embassy in the Philippines, people were almost always amazed at how different China is and how I, a Filipino, was living my life here in China, which only shows that the videos I created are reaching the right audience. So thank you all for being here and taking part of this discussion. I'm sure this discussion will help strengthen the relationship between my home country, the Philippines, and my second home, China. Thank you. Thanks, Chair Mayoring. At present, the Gen Z is growing into a new force in all books of life, living in a more vigorous era. They have more open dreams and more diverse choices. They have a strong sense of responsibility and focus on social issues such as digital economy, energy transformation, and sustainable development. Now let's move on to the last topic, the ideal future of Gen Zers, the impact of digital economy and energy transition and world development. 